Earlier today, Nuglin lifted off for a second time a part of the NG-2 mission. Here we saw payload deployment of the two escapade spacecraft headed to Mars, in addition to another booster landing attempt. This time around, Blue Origin managed to successfully land the booster, marking a first for the rocket and a significant milestone for the company. Here I'll go more in depth into the launch, booster landing, payload operations, and more. With only 20 seconds left on the clock, there was a hold. The terminal count was aborted, and teams began investigating the issue. They then reset the clock before there was a second hold at T-minus 17 minutes. Fortunately, despite these two pauses, they again reset the clock and began counting down. At T-minus 30 seconds, the water deluge system turned on. In the final seconds, the BE-4 engines ignited, followed shortly after by liftoff. Nuclean cleared the tower and began accelerating. Mission Control confirmed that they had seven good engines. Views from the ground also showed all seven engines were firing. At T plus 1 minute and 34 seconds, it then passed through max Q, the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. Since the first flight was during the nighttime, you couldn't see much. This time around, we got some great views of the vehicle. The next mission milestone was main engine cutoff at T plus 3 minutes and 5 seconds. The engines faded out before separation and ignition of the upper stage. A camera cut to the bottom of the upper stage showing inside the inner stage and top of the booster. The livestream didn't show the actual separation, but you could see both of the BE-3U upper stage engines firing from the ground. Right after, you could also see the payload fairings jettison, with both fairings flying away from the upper stage. Mission Control confirmed that both upper stage engines were firing nominally. In the meantime, the booster was using its RCS thrusters to reorient itself in preparation for its trip back to the ground. During its coast, following stage separation, the booster was traveling around 2.8 kilometers per second and was on trajectory. At T plus 6 minutes and 56 seconds, three of the booster's engines ignited a part of the re-entry burn. At this point, the booster had already made it further than Nuklin's first launch. We also got some great tracking shots of the booster during this entire sequence. The burn lasted 30 seconds and is meant to significantly slow the first stage leading up to its landing burn. Cameras showed the booster nearly horizontal as it used its two strikes at the bottom of the stage to provide lift and cross range. In addition to those two strikes, it's using the four fins at the top of the stage for more control. After the 30 second fire, the engines cut off at T plus 7 minutes and 26 seconds. Over the next minute, the booster continued to fly back toward Jacqueline. As it passed below 10,000 feet altitude, or around 3,050 meters, it ignited its engines for the landing burn. This starts with three engines firing before transitioning to one. Onboard cameras showed the stage orienting vertically over the water and the start of the landing leg deployment. The landing legs deployed and it slowly lowered itself over the landing barge. While the live video feed was cutting out a bit, we got a still frame of the booster with its legs deployed just off to the side of the ship, with its center BE-4 engine firing. This image is interesting because it highlights how much the booster still needs to move, even as low as it is, to align itself over the center of the barge. They then cut to a different camera on Jacqueline, showing the booster very slowly descending before a soft touchdown in the center of the platform. It then shut off the one remaining BE-4 engine. The smoke cleared, and you could see the charred landing pad along with the booster, which was in good shape. This marks the first time Blue Origin successfully landed Nuklin's first stage, which is a big deal for the company. In addition to the livestream video, after the launch, Jeff Bezos posted a video of part of the landing from a different angle. This shows the booster coming down and starting to practically hover well off to the side of the landing barge. At the same time, with its legs already deployed, it's slowly moving toward Jacqueline before the video cuts back to views we've already seen on the livestream. In the next few days, we can expect Blue Origin to release a much clearer video of the entire booster landing process. Focusing on the upper stage, it was still firing its two engines a part of the first engine burn. They ignited back at T plus 3 minutes and 17 seconds and didn't stop until around 12 minutes in. At T plus 13 minutes, we heard Mission Control confirm that the upper stage engines had shut off during SECO, or second engine cutoff. On NG2, there were two planned burns at the second stage. The second began at T plus 25 minutes and lasted only a minute and 44 seconds before they were shut off again, and the upper stage was just about ready to deploy its payloads. The only payloads that actually needed to be deployed on this launch were two spacecraft a part of the escapade mission. At T plus 33 minutes and 18 seconds, the first spacecraft was deployed and separated from New Glenn. The video feed wasn't the best, but you could see the spacecraft missing from its adapter. 30 seconds later, the second was deployed. Both of the spacecraft, named Blue and Gold, are heading to Mars. We then got views of the booster safing process about 25 minutes after the booster touched down. Here, the recovery team deployed the ROV, or remotely operated vehicle which connects to the booster and effectively provides power and pumps nitrogen into the rocket. For reference, there are no humans on the recovery ship when Nuklin comes into land. Instead, they're a safe distance away on a separate ship. The use of the ROV allows the tanking process to continue to make it safe for the booster to operate. Finally, six transit stands secure the booster to the deck. Once it's safe and secured, at that point, the crew can come aboard and finish the job. 
The only other payload was a Viasat demonstration. However, this payload didn't need to be deployed. Instead, it was a technology demonstration that stayed attached to the vehicle. After being activated, it gathered data for a while before the mission officially ended around T plus 1 hour and 42 minutes. Overall, this was basically a perfect mission for Blue Origin. Not only did they deploy the payloads, but they also managed to land the booster on the second try. Back on the first launch, the booster was lost during engine ignition, part of the re-entry burn. Leading up to NG2, Blue Origin made quite a few changes, both physical but also in the pre-launch phase. For example, they extended the hot fire duration this time to simulate the landing burn sequence by shutting down the non-gimbaled engines after ramping down to 50% thrust, then shutting down the outboard gimbaled engines while ramping the center engine to 80% thrust. They were quoted saying, This helps us understand fluid interactions between active and inactive engine feed lines during landing. Given that the first attempt was lost so early in the mission, the ability to then nail the landing on the second attempt is a big milestone for the company. The other notable detail is all the data Blue Origin has access to now. From booster launch to landing, they have real-world experience with Nuclean's booster. Not to mention access to parts of the vehicle like the BE-4 engines, which are the first BE-4 engines to launch and be recovered. As for the two payloads that were deployed, Escapade is a NASA mission, but the two spacecraft were built by Rocket Lab. It stands for Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers. With both successfully deployed, it will take the two spacecraft a couple of years before they arrive at Mars. It will go into a one-year, kidney-bean-shaped Earth proximity phase before returning to a low-altitude perigee for a trans-Mars injection or TMI engine burn. This burn sends blue and gold on their way to Mars. Next, they'll execute a ballistic Type II interplanetary trajectory, with several trajectory correction maneuvers, or TCMs, arriving at Mars in late 2027. Around late 2028, they begin their science mission, which consists of multiple science campaigns. The twin orbiters will take simultaneous observations from different locations around the planet. The observations are hoping to reveal Mars's real-time response to space weather and how the Martian magnetosphere changes over time. Specifically, Escapade will analyze how Mars's magnetic field guides particle flows around the planet, how energy and momentum are transported from the solar wind through the magnetosphere, and what processes control the flow of energy and matter into and out of the Martian atmosphere. They want to see how the solar wind strips atmosphere away from Mars. So much so that Mars no longer supports liquid water on its surface. The pair will be the first multi-spacecraft science mission to the planet. Earlier today, Blue Origin launched New Glenn for the second time a part of the NG-2 mission. Here we saw successful payload deployment of both Escapade spacecraft in addition to the first booster landing of New Glenn. In the coming days, we can expect to hear a lot more about the launch as the company provides more details and video. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.